Hi, my name is Corey and I'm one of the developers of SDSX. In this video, we are going to go over how to design and make and save your own kit. In our kit library here, we have a lot of kits to choose from and each one of these has their own sequence and different sounds and different colors on the pads. So let's get into how to make our own. One way to do it is to start from here and just press save kit or you can press the plus button if you have a new bank. So let's create a new bank. Just call it my bank and we will select there and add a new kit. My kit's the default, that's all right. And now we have my kit, which starts with our default kit, um, but we can go into this and start making some changes. One of the easiest ways to add new sounds to pads is in the sample bank. You can scroll through here. Um, we can tap to search. Maybe we want to find a different kick and search through, and we have all these kicks to choose from. If you press the speaker icon, you can kind of preview that purple one is kind of cool so I can click tap and drag and drop and now we have that kick on that pad um, let's do a couple more of these maybe we want this other kick up here and let's clear out our search so we can find some other kits I kind of like these new analog sounds that we have so let's find something from there. Ooh, lasers, yes. And a cool tom sound. All right, so there's one way we can add these new sounds and we still have our other ones from the default kit. Another way to add sounds into your kit is by unlocking the pads and then pressing on the wrench and you'll get into this pad editor window right here. And at the top we have two different sample banks. So let's say we like this first snare, and you can audition up here. So we like that first snare, but maybe we wanted to add in another snare underneath. Maybe this Furby snare here. Sweet. So you can click and drag from here, put it there. That sounds pretty good, but I might want a different snare. So you can actually go in through this menu here to find all of the sounds, and any sounds that you've imported here will also show up. Um, you double tap to click it, so I'm gonna have that hat underneath. Kind of makes a bit of a brighter snare sound. Um, and then let's say we want to change the color of this pad as well. Let's make it yellow. So that's that paintbrush up there. You can also cycle through your pads with the arrows here on top. Let's go into the next pad and edit this one, and I will show you um, a little bit with the pitch shifting here. So we have our normal hi-hat, um, but you can actually change the pitch or pan so we can make it really high-pitched or low pitch. I think those high-pitched ones sound kind of cool, so let's add one there. Um, and I'm actually going to find another hi-hat so we can do a bit of sound design. Um, let's try that hat. Sounds different. So we'll have those two hats, and right now they're just blended together. You have that high one and then the electric hats that we just put in. If we skip down to sample mode, we can change how those two samples are interacting. When you tap on the pad or audition button there, we can mix them together. We can rotate them so they'll play every other time. We can have them randomly triggered, which is kind of fun. And then we have a uh, vertical, or sorry, velocity switch and velocity mix. So velocity switch, the bottom of the pad with this velocity mode, will play one sample, and then the top of it will play the other one, which actually I kind of like how this is sounding. Let me show you really quick what velocity mix does. And what that does is it'll keep sample one always at full volume, but then it will mix in sample two. So you can hear just the high-pitched hi-hat down here. And as we get higher in velocity, you hear the, um, the what was it called? The electric hats mix in. Let's go back in there. Yeah, let's keep it in velocity mix mode for now. 
And let's go to another pad to demonstrate trigger modes. Let's, this open hat will be a good one to demonstrate. Jump into the pad editor. And so we have um, quite a few different trigger modes here, and this is how the pad overall is being triggered. So one shot, you tap it and the whole sample plays out. Gate mode, the sample will only play when you're tapped on the pad. So let's try to show you this with my pencil. As I hold on to it, it'll keep going, but if I let go, it'll cut off and kind of choke the sound off a little bit. So you can get some really cool effects with that, especially with longer sounds. We have toggle, which will turn a pad It'll open the gate when you hit it, and it'll turn it off when you hit it again. So let me go out of here to try to demonstrate it a little bit. So we'll go open, and see how it lights up, and then the next one will turn it off. So you can still do those kind of like chopped off sounds with longer samples if you pad if you hit it twice fast, but or you can just leave it open and then close it off. Um, if we continue on through those trigger modes, we have a couple re-triggers. And these are all based on the tempo. So we have an eighth note retrigger all the way up to a 64th note retrigger. Go through, back to eighth note. And so if I hold on this, you can hear it repeat. And then if we increase these, we go triplets, 16th notes, all the way up to 64th notes. If I go back to eighth notes, I'll show you that that is um, in time with our tempo, so this is eighth notes at 120. If we drag this down, say to 93, now we're slowed down right there. Awesome. Well, now that we've made a few changes to this kit, before we keep going down into a few more of the options, let's save it. So I'm going to lock the pads back up here, see if I like what I have so far. Cool. So it sounded good. I think there's still some more edits, but let's go ahead and save what we've done so far. We go into our kit editor. We're still on my kit. Make sure not to tap it because it'll recall the beginning of what we had with the default kit, but I'm going to go ahead and press save. It'll still be called my kit. Right there you can name it something else. And actually what it's doing too is it's saving the tempo change that we did, and it will save the sequence that's still in there. So we'll press save. And then if we go and recall one of these community kits, you can see that if we come back to my kit, it'll be tempo 93 with those changes that we've made. All right, let's keep diving in and looking at a few different options. Let's maybe go into the clap here to see what we can change and make different. So I kind of like a low clap, so let's drop that down. It sounds kind of cool. And so you can change how the pad plays. You can loop it rather than just having it play one time, which, oh, here we go. Uh, that has to be in gate or toggle mode. So let's change it over to gate mode and loop and just kind of hear what that does. And that'll loop based on the timing of the sample. So if you import your own loops or maybe like a shaker or tambourine loop, you can go ahead and loop them that way in there. But we are going to keep this on one shot poly when it's in poly mode it will finish out the sounds that are playing from the pad and when it's in mono or not poly mode it will start the sound over so right now that you can kind of hear it'll chop it off but if when it's in poly that whole clap will finish out and it gets a little bit um if you have long sounds it can kind of overlay a little bit too much so I actually kind of like this clap down into mono mode. Um, mute groups are great on hi-hats, which we can kind of show you what we've got going on with the hats here. If they're, They might be in a mute group already. So we do have them in a mute group, and that means when you're playing one hi-hat, and then you play another one, it'll also choke it off. So we've got this one that's playing those eighth notes, and I could kind of stop it with the other one there. And we have one mute group, so you can add all of the pads to the mute group if you want, or just a few. Whatever you choose to design it with. 
And the last couple options here for sound design on your kit with the pads is whether or not you want the velocity to be um, engaged or not. And sometimes it's nice to not have that engaged like on your kick and snare if you wanted it to be really consistent sounding. So I'm gonna turn off velocity on the kick. So it's gonna be the same volume no matter where you press on the pad. Unlike the snare, which right now has velocity, so bottom is um, softer, top is louder. So let's just do it on the on the kick. And then you can also adjust the range if it is velocity enabled. So maybe on the snare we don't ever want it to get too quiet. So left side here is quiet, right side is loud. And let's maybe just have it be the top half of the velocity range. So it still has some travel and dis difference from top to bottom, but it's not quite as extreme. Great. All right. So that's about it for just designing for the pads. And since we've done a few things, let's save again. My kit right there. And then one other way to kind of sound design, or actually two more, we have our mixer and then we have our effects. So on our mixer, we can adjust the levels, um, delay sends, reverb sends, pan left and right, and then we have a mute and solo button on each one. And then we also have a master level and pan left and right. So we have the default sequence program in here, so I'm gonna press play so we can listen to what it sounds like and make some adjustments. And it seems a little slow, so let's bump the tempo up so we can kinda... So let's go back up to 104. And I want my snare to be a little bit louder, so bring that up. Oh, that tom's a little loud, so we're gonna bring the tom down. And that kick down, but then let's also send that kick, which would be kind of funny, to the delay. And then let's send the snare to the reverb. Great, so now on this top here, use a pencil so it's a little easier for you guys to see. On the top we have delay, reverb, high pass, low pass, and then our master effect. So on that delay, there's actually this sync button down here, so it'll sync into time with what you're doing. So we're gonna press sync. So anytime this plays, it has that delay and we can adjust the parameters of that delay. Cool, so that's a, a slower delay that repeats and then our snare, we have some of that reverb going on it. So let's go into the reverb and maybe make a little bit longer of a reverb. So you can adjust these nodes how you want and then we have high pass and low pass which will cut high pass will cut the low end out and kind of thin it out and low pass will do the opposite and cut the high end and filter it down so sometimes i'll bring it down a little bit we'll do that one there and maybe where's this one we'll bring this one up a little bit for our kit like that and then the last effect that we have here is the master effect and that has some compression and saturation so if you bring this over let me actually switch so we've got uh the level meter here and i like to watch that because if it starts to hit red then you're peaking and it might distort your sound a little bit so try not to go too much into the red but we can compress it a little bit more so it sounds a little more snappy and clicky maybe a little bit less saturation that's kind of a cool sound. And we'll stick with the default um, sequence because I kind of like it with these sounds. Um, I think last thing we'll do here is maybe we'll change a few of the colors and then we'll save the kit and I think that'll be it. So let's go back in and maybe make our all of our hi-hats green. We've got some green. Let's clap. Let's make it yellow to match the snare. Nice. I think it's pretty good. So let's go ahead and save that again. Save, and now we've got our kit. So yeah, hopefully that helps you out when you're building kits and trying to design your own sounds. Um, sometimes it's really nice to start with one of the factory kits that you like. Like if you're a fan of any of these, let's say maybe short and fast. If you like this sound, <laughs> 
and want to build off of that or add or change to it, you totally can, or make your own sequence if, if you want. So any of that can be saved um, in the user kits. If you do, um, you can also share them with your friends, so please do that, or you can share them with another device that you have. So if I built all this on my iPad and I want to play it on my phone later, I can share current kit and then export to my iPhone. Um, and you can also export any of those sequences too if you export pattern audio that'll end up in your files and you'll have a WAV file of that. So yeah, lots of options here with importing and exporting and designing your own sounds. So I hope you guys enjoy it and you have fun using SDSX.